Hi folks. What is insight? Is it the same thing as reflection? Can you teach someone to have insight? How is insight assessed? And can it be remediated? Now these questions are actually really important in medicine and it would be so nice to have the answers to them. So my colleagues and I went and searched the literature. What I'm going to talk about for the next few minutes is a systematic literature review that we undertook to find out these answers around what the literature has been telling us for the last 40, 50 years around reflection and insight. And we're going to propose that there's three different types of reflection that are talked about in the literature. You've got your episodic reflection, then you've got the cycles of reflection that you go through, and then the thing that we all aspire to is reflection as a state of being. So let's get into it. Here's the paper, Reflecting on Insight and Insights into Reflection. The mission of insight is the power or act of seeing into a situation, or the act or result of apprehending the inner nature of things or of seeing intuitively. So we went all the way back to the 1980s. 1983, Sean, right, who talks about reflection. And then one year later, Kolb comes out with a cyclic idea around reflection. As we fast forward uh, 2002, we've got Grant and Grant and colleagues, they created this uh, scale for assessing insight and critical reflection. So we've got these as our foundations for the literature and pretty much every medical school on the planet has taken on the ideas of Sean and Kolb and some of them even Grant to really embed into curriculum critical reflection and into their assessments as well. So it's a really big part of the professionalism and leadership kind of domain of medicine. More recently, Epstein and colleagues in 2008, and also Ng and Kinsella and those uh, colleagues in 2015 in medical education have really sort of shaped what's been going on in the literature lately. Well, first we identified 7,126 articles, but don't worry, I'm not going to bore you with the details of them. We whittled that number down to 75. Now, that's a pretty solid number of papers. And what we found, actually, I want to take us all the way back to Kolb, because Kolb was suggesting that critical reflection is intrinsic to some forms of learning. We're all learning all the way through our life and even as children we are zoning out and reflecting on the fact that that kid just stole my toy and what am I going to do about it and do I need to seek help and do I need to do this and la la la. We're actually having critical reflection as part of our learning cycle. I'm inclined to agree with Kolb. This remains true. This is totally the case. And actually, we could go back further. We could arguably suggest that Plato was the first person to come up with this because Plato was observing a whole lot of learning takes place around play and childhood that is relevant to the learning that takes place as adults. Anyway, that's another story. The point here is we found 75 papers that build on the ideas of Kolb and Sean. We found that the literature basically doesn't talk about insight very much at all. So we didn't get to answer our questions fully on whether or not you could teach someone to have insight and whether or not that could be accurately assessed. The answer might be no, folks. The answer might be no, folks. The answer might be no, folks. But we did find three key themes that the literature sort of sits into these three areas. We use the system of rich, thick, and thin. And what we found was very few papers in the last 50 years have actually provided very much empirical evidence or very rich um, theoretical evidence. You can see here there's about 10 papers that were really rich that this was the good stuff then there were a few more that were thick these are in the middle category 
but most of the literature look it goes over the page most of the literature was thin a lot of this stuff was people's ideas about things but not really backed up I just want to talk about reflection as a state of being for a moment. This theme, reflection is constantly occurring. It's seen as an inherent quality. So this is for the people who get it, right? They're self-monitoring. They have self-awareness. They're mindful. And this is an important thing to aspire to in medicine. This is an inherent quality. That's what the literature is telling us. Reflection as a state could potentially evolve if episodic or cyclic reflection became internalized and unconscious. In the end, this review found the term reflection is used in postgraduate medical education in a variety of ways. These range from simple practical initiatives to introduce reflective episodes through to complex discussions of an idealized reflective state. There is no doubt that clinicians value insight and self-awareness as an important facet of their professionalism. This was evident in every one of these reports. However, this review shows that there is a poor definition of the phenomenon itself. So there it is, folks. Can we teach someone to have insight? Probably not. Can we teach them to critically reflect? Yes. Can we teach them to take on critical reflection as a state of being maybe we can push them in that direction that's all from me peace out